All right, hello and welcome back to another wee bit different video. Today's video, we have a gaming related video, which is not something I get to do all the time where it's just video games in general, but what video game had a gimmick that just didn't work? I was scrolling through Reddit, not even thinking of video ideas because, you know, that was kind of just off my mind at the time. But then I saw this post and I'm like, dude, this is this would be a great video uh, to make because I've played a lot of video games and I've had some video gimmicks that just didn't work for me, uh, some that worked for others. For example, now let me remind you, this is just an example that is opinion based. I was not a fan of Call of Duty's Advanced Warfare gimmick, which was the advanced movement. Uh, it was the first of its kind where it would just like boost you, you would jump up really high. It, it just wasn't for me. Funny enough, later on when it was refined, I actually did enjoy it in uh, Infinite Warfare. Funny enough, that game's gimmick people weren't a fan of, which again was the advanced movement. But again, for me, it was more polished and refined. I enjoyed it, others didn't. So this is all opinion based. You might hate on me for my opinion. I might disagree with your opinion, but as long as we can stay civil, I think that this can be a really fun discussion to have. But anyway, let's get into the comment section. Before we do though, let me actually read the original poster's opinion. If you want my answer, I gotta say, new Super Mario Bros 2. I know by saying that I'm making a lot of people mad, but this is the most violently average Mario game I've ever played. To go on for a bit of a rant, if I know anything about Mario games, it's that ever since the 3D games came out, the 2D games have kind of been treated as filler games. While the 3D games are the main events of the franchise, I'm not saying that the 2D games aren't fun, but that is definitely how it feels like. Uh, though it does feel like they're trying to make things more interesting with the release of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And New Super Mario Bros. 2 might be the most blatant example that Nintendo didn't know what they wanted to do with the series, because the only good idea they, they had for this game was coins. Just a crap load of coins and coin-themed items and power-ups. And unless you like getting a bunch of extra lives, that's all this game was really uh, offering. Take the coin gimmick out and you're just stuck with an average Mario game with standard levels and okay-ish boss fights. Honestly, the first new Super Mario Bros. on the DS, the first new Super Mario Bros. on the DS had more to offer. And if I am thinking of the correct game, let me actually uh, verify that we're on the same page with, with this game. But if, I, if I'm thinking correctly of the game, yeah, I, I totally agree with him. I think the first one was freaking amazing. I think this one was a little more all over the place. A little more lackluster. When I say a little more, I mean a lot of more. But the first one, uh, I think it was New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, right? This is the first one? Yeah. No, that's Deluxe. Which one was the first one? New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Is this the one? Yeah, dude, this one was freaking amazing. I, I had a strong passion for this game growing up but if i'm gonna go to images to make it clear for you guys just so you guys can see it a little bit more but yeah as i'm scrolling down dude this game was this game was badass i really really enjoyed this game uh do i need to move my face so you can see some of this stuff perhaps okay but as i'm scrolling down let me click on some like this oh damn it that's a terrible view okay this game this game was badass I had a major passion for this one. Uh, it got a little out of hand though, again, with the the number two, so. Kind of whatever, but this is what it looked like. Uh, again, it fantastic, loved the hidden areas, loved uh, playing it with my brothers at the time. Honestly, a great game. Okay, so let's take a look at the top comment we have. There was this horror game on PS2 called Lifeline, where you wore a headset and ordered the main character around an infested space station Infested? Infected, maybe? Anyway, and try to help her escape. The concept was cool. It was really cool atmosphere, but the tech was just not there at the time to really make it a great experience. What's this game called? Uh, Lifeline. Okay, Lifeline, PS2. Let's just, uh, let's take a brief, let's take a brief look at this game. I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, as to how it's going to pan out. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just show you guys clips. As I'm, uh, nah, nah, fuck it, let's react. Let, let's, let's get this live reaction going. Game. With how Cannot talk, talk now. Interesting. In last 20 years, this is an interesting video game, game like gimmick, Lifeline though. Could play today. There's definitely it's potential to be had there. The was not quite there with the ambitions they had. This results in goofy moments and some downright frustrating ones, but there are plenty of moments where its charm shines through. Wear the sunglasses. There's no need to wreck it. 
I didn't say shoot them. Examine the sunglasses. It's a fascinating <laughs> new title that I can <laughs> Okay, to first of all, let me shout out this YouTuber who made this video. I don't want to just like ignore that. So shout out to Boulder Punch. Um, he is the creator of this video. This is a Japanese developed game. Like saying dodge reft instead of dodge left. One memorable four player podcast clip demonstrates this. Hey, bro. <laughs> Hey, Roll. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try the next one. Oh, am I an asshole for laughing at that? I, I don't think Great so. Station. Great. I came across a guide on how they got the game to work at PCS. What? Instead of using the most up to date version, I, 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 I don't think I'm an asshole for laughing at that, but. That I hope if that's. You're interested in trying out Lifeline, I <laughs> don't cancel me, please. And pin comment. <laughs> I bought a $20 Logic, and there were several cases where it felt like the game cheated. There's no way it didn't pick up my answers here. One of the games we could play is Tongue Twister. I had no idea that the She Sells Seashells Tongue Twister had a second part to it. She sells seashells on the seashore. Seashells she sells are seashells she is sure. <laughs> okay, your turn. I don't know that whole other part. She sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, she... what was it? Haha, <laughs> nice try, but you blew it. But I somehow tricked the game into thinking I said it correctly. She sells seashells on the seashore. Seashell, seashells, it's assured. Shit. <laughs> this game might just be fun to play just to mess around. Um, shoot various objects. Most objects she won't shoot, but there are exceptions, some quite surprising. Shoot the corpse. Could you really do that? Shoot a dead person? I absolutely refuse. Shoot the meal. Didn't your mother tell you to never waste food? Let's not. Shoot coffee. <laughs> Oops. I missed. Rio's going to have a lot of bad luck with all the mirrors we can ask her to shoot. But it uh, does come in handy at one point. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I've, I've been watching this video for a long time now. Um, that was... Uh, for a PS2 game, hey man, it's innovative at the time. I'll give them credit. And I'm not gonna show you guys all the 10 minutes that I watched. I'm gonna cut out a shit ton. But just know that there was a lot of problems in that. And, oh man, <laughs> great comment. Introduce me to a game I never heard of, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I just did. Uh, next comment we have Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness and its strength upgrades. It offered no benefits, it was just literally a way of making sure you do things in a certain order. Honestly, I, I looked this up. I try to find like people's opinions on it and like maybe some gameplay of it, but there wasn't really anything I could find. So we're just gonna have to take this guy's word for it. And um, based off of a forum that I found, someone agrees with it, but couldn't find too much on that. Uh, next comment, EA Land, which is The Sims Online. Imagine playing The Sims, but without the ability to speed up. I dozed off watching my sim reading a book for hours. Oh. Oh yeah, that's a problem. If you guys aren't familiar with The Sims, it's basically a simulating game of, of, of an actual life. But without speeding up stuff, that is... Uh... How did anyone think this was a good idea? I, yeah, I mean... You're meant to create several households and manage like six sims, so you move between them a lot. It incentivizes buying in-game currency to skip tasks. <laughs> okay, yep. There's the classic EA we know and and live at number two and live at number two. Uh, yeah, now that suddenly makes more sense. But if if you're playing a Sims game and you're doing a task in which someone needs to sleep, you can't like watching someone sleep for that many hours is that is crazy. But anyway, okay. It is what it is. Uh, move on to the next one. The recent Sonic Superstars with the cast abilities are pretty useless other than Burst. Cool idea lore-wise, though. Okay, so I know in particular we're not checking out the chaos abilities, but I haven't seen much of this game, period. So I'm just trying to see, like, kind of what this game is about. And yeah, it is a 2D Sonic game that looks 
I don't know if anyone here has played the Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3. Those games were amazing. This looks like it's kind of just building from that in a updated fashion. And I, I, I don't see the burst stuff in, in, in the gimmick, but... You know, it was my first time seeing this game. Okay, not a lot to look at there. Like I said, I'm not seeing the chaos ability gimmick, so I don't want to put my two cents on that. I just wanted to check out the game because I honestly haven't seen it, but I guess that was kind of cool. Uh, going to the next comment though. Bunch of Wii games that force the motion control shit when it could have easily been fine with the Pro Controller or GameCube controller. Wii was great, but sometimes I don't want to wave my arms around when playing through a game. Yes and no. Because I feel like the Wii was designed for that motion shit in particular. And yes, certain games should be cool with it not using it. Uh, but it was like new at the time and they try to maximize the use of that. For example, Wii Sports without it, I don't think would be as nearly as fun. Like, I think why people loved playing Wii Tennis was because you got to smack the shit like, you know, and mimic that kind of play. As opposed to, do you think anyone plays any tennis game now? Like seriously, like what video games are there for tennis in 2024, bro? Like not a lot because it's not it's not as nearly as fun. So I think it's both a gift and a curse when you enforce that motion play because it it enforces you to to obviously get out of, you know, a more isolated area where you're kind of just boxed in where you're gaming it, right? Let's say if you're like laying down in bed, you're not doing that. But if you're standing up, you know, it feels a bit innovative. It feels a bit um refreshing to just be moving around while gaming so i think it's a gift and a curse with this one i understand that sometimes you don't want to wave your arms around but i mean it was 2006 when it came out 2007 2008 i'm not entirely sure what year it came out but it was awesome i'm gonna be honest i loved playing the wii games okay so this is a heavily upvoted comment i'm not familiar with this at all the dragon rot and sekiro story-wise it makes sense the wolf's gift given by the by his lord causes sickness to those around them but mechanically, it doesn't do much. Yeah, you get locked out of NPC quests, but who cares? And you can still trade with merchants that are affected by it anyways. And you can still easily cure it. There were data mines that showed there was supposed to be more to the dragon rot, but they toned it down. Um, Sekiro, when did this game come out before I even talk or look at some of the follow-up comments? This game came out in 2018. Um, let's just, let's just type in Sekiro dragon rot, honestly and then see see what we come across. But uh, off of that, oh, okay, the how to cure it. I just want to see it. What's Dragon Rot? Okay, yeah, let's take a quick look at this. He chose the tragic sun on the outskirts of the first area. Once that's been given back to Emma, she creates the Dragon's Blood Dragon. I totally blood. forgot to give a shout out to this YouTube channel. Uh, VGS, video game self, sophistry. Sophistry, I think that's how you pronounce that. Anyway, shout out to them for this video because I, I I feel obligated to give credit. Cured game wide for the time being. If you keep dying, obviously it does come back. You can buy these items from the merchant for I think it was 180 coin later in the game. So it is something that you can adjust as you keep playing the game. It has much grander implications. I do think that this is kind of an odd step just because the people that are the worst at this game that will be dying the most probably care a lot more about the narrative and the, and the hidden stories and the characters than those that are very, very good at the game. I just want to leave you with some of the narrative beats in the game that tells this story because I do think it's rather interesting and a pretty good narrative design strategy. I still don't understand Dragon Rot. <laughs> <laughs> So, you're awake. Your death is not your fate. Just yet. So Dragon Rot makes him look like that, like like sick as shit. Okay, should I read this out? I'm gonna should I fucking read this out? Okay, yeah, let's just read this out loud. Somewhere pain cough rings out continuously. 
Uh, the man who coughs ceaselessly, ze ze zealously <laughs> sculpts statues of Buddha to avoid being consumed by the building flames. Only this item reduces one's chances of receiving unseen aid. And this is the raw essence sculptor. Three minutes, 41 seconds into the video, we have Dragon Rot. The more one with the power of... I'm sorry. The more one with the... Why is it worded like that? It makes it hard to read. The more one with the power of the dragon's heritage dies, the more sickness known as Dragon Rot spreads throughout the world. If one known to Wolf is coughing and wheezing, it's likely they are afflicted with Dragon Rot. The more raw essence Wolf has, the lower the chances of receiving unseen aid. Uh, obviously, I don't play this game, so I don't understand the mechanics at all. But Dragon Rot basically means someone's really fucking sick. And, I mean, it sounds like a cool concept. Must have not been applied the best, though. Mm, what is it? Seems to me your battle sense has returned. You're more like a shinobi than before. If only a little. Dude, this the... The captions remind me, or the subtitles remind me of a Souls-like game. Is this, is Sekiro made by FromSoft? Is Sekiro de development, devs? Is, is it FromSoft? Yeah, it is FromSoft. Okay, yeah, dude, you could tell because of their subtitles. It's super familiar to Elden Ring, Bloodborne. I had no idea this game was by uh, FromSoft. Interesting. Whether you make use of them or not is up to you. Okay, so I'm not interested in looking to cure at all or looking how to cure at all. I don't even play the game. I just wanted to understand the the gimmick as best as possible. And now I know what Dragon Rod is, but uh, I'm going to edit out a lot of that video. I watched a lot of it. Anyway, next comment. We have RPG games that either have moral choices that have no real effect on either the player or the story or keep repeating the same moral dilemma over and over and over again. After a certain point, it ceases to have any impact, like when you realize that is literally the game. RPG games that do that. I'm trying to think, what RPG games do this? Um, okay, so in the first Mass Effect, the good choices were fine, but the bad choices made you a fucking douche. Not like an evil overlord, just a complete asshole for whom no one could ever do anything right. The later games are better about it being an edgy badass, but hot damn the first one. Uh, yeah, I I guess I can't relate to this uh, comment. I don't know any RPG games that do that per se. I remember Bioshock, you can get more powerful, you just have to murder a bunch of brainwashed little- Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, can't say I really understand the comment. I don't play games like that, but man, this comment drove a whole lot of replies. Anyway, Oblivion with that weird conversation wheel to get people to like you. Good idea. Fun for the first few times. Just annoying the 200th time. Oblivion. Let's uh, let, let's take a look at what this guy is talking about. Okay, so apparently this is an Elder Scrolls game. And uh, let's just... The game is Shout out to Mythic Dwellers, by the way. For those of you who just want to get straight into the game strategies, go to the timestamp on screen. However, if you're new to the game, or just have no idea how the game works, don't skip ahead, because I'll explain that to you now. Each time you play the minigame, you will select each action once. Every NPC will have a different reaction to the possible selection. However, Coerce, they will always joke, one, like one, dislike boast. one, and hate one of the options. An NPC's reaction to each selection is predetermined, and will always be the same every time you talk to that particular NPC. When you select an action the NPC loves or likes, the disposition will always go up, and vice versa. If you choose one that they dislike or hate, then it will always go down. On top of that, the disposition will slowly go down over time as you play the minigame. Generally, it's fairly easy to tell which are the loves and hate actions for the NPC. Hovering over each action will change the NPC's facial expressions, with a big smile for love and a sneer or frown for the hate actions. On Khajiits and Agonians, the facial expressions can be <laughs> This so does seem like a weird... It, this is this is pretty weird. Up being happy for the Isn't Elder like Scrolls like a really beloved eyes, game? Narrow being I, I honestly have seen enough. That's kind of freaking weird. Uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. This is a pretty beloved... Isn't Elder Scrolls a beloved series or something like that? Oblivion with that weird conversation would get people to like you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, someone said, I hated that minigame, but it was definitely a step up from Morrowind's system. 
It seemed like everybody hated every other op option except being bribed in Morrowind. You hit Joker around or whatever it was, whatever it was, and they would just be like, fuck off, bro, lol. Yeah, that does not seem like a fun gimmick. We'll go through one more, because I spent a lot of time watching a lot of people's videos. Okay, so I found this comment really funny. <laughs> if I have to tilt my controller one more fucking time. <laughs> now, I know that it's not exactly relevant. I mean, it is relevant, but not like exactly relevant is what I'm trying to say. But in Bloodborne, if you hold the X button and like flip your controller or like do turns with it, your guy starts emoting uh, whatever emote is equipped to that certain motion. Well, uh, <laughs> let me say this. It, it doesn't work. Honestly, it, it doesn't work at all. And it's super confusing. The controller does not read it correctly at all sometimes. And uh, mid fight, like mid battle in Bloodborne, mid battle, let me stress that. Let me really, really stress that. In a game, uh, if you don't know what Bloodborne is, it's a Souls-like game that is very punishing if you let someone hit you, because whenever you get hit in games like that, that shit hurts. Well, mid-fight, you could accidentally hold the X button, and because you're reacting or you're doing whatever, you could emote mid-fight and get the SmackDown laid on you, and that shit sucks. Uh, a lot. A lot, a lot. I can't stress that enough. I absolutely despise that feature in that game. Now, there are some lore things you can do with emoting that is like really important. I think there's only like two lore things you can do with the emotes, but, or maybe one, at the very least one, but I think two. But anyway, it doesn't work in that game. Don't make me tilt my controller on a PlayStation game like Bloodborne, where you can emote mid fight. That shit is not cool. But anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about some of these video game gimmicks. Did they work for you? Did they not work for you? What video game gimmick did not get named that you were just like, man, this was not it. But anyway, I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, this is Ollie Been Different. All we've been different. And we out.